ready to proceed to our next presenter. Uh, our third presenter is from the Department of Industrial Engineering, College of Engineering and Architecture. The title of the presentation is Reviewing Digital Learning Journal, Overcoming Teaching Learning Strategy Deficits Under CIT University's Made for Learners Framework. And it will be presented to us by Engineer Charity Ann Cabanli. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So, um, Mama Eric, can I share a screen on my charity P PPT? Yes, Mom, that's allowed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Feedback systems usually rely on quantitative data to determine performance. However, most areas uncovered well cannot be synthesized in numbers. This is why the Department of Industrial Engineering came up with reviewing digital journal, overcoming teaching learning strategy deficits under CIT University's Made for Learners framework. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Charity from the College of Engineering and Architecture. This afternoon, I'm going to share three things. Why we do what we do, how was it done, and what's next. First one, why we do what we do. Going through my journal readings, studies have shown the power of reflective journals. It says the ability to express emotions is difficult, although significant for students. Another one. The learning journals has successfully activated cognitive and metacognitive strategies, and it also mentioned that journaling is most effective when expectations are set by educators for content, length, and degree of reflection. So how did we do it? CIT University has made an emergency remote teaching approach, or the Made for Learners framework, the multiple approaches to distance education for technology and learners. And in line with the continuous improvement for the Department of Industrial Engineering, we have created the Digital Learning Journal. It is a Google Form enabled online survey to achieve the holistic development of students through collecting all their reflections per week. During the mid half of the semester, we have improved our IE Weekly Digital Learning Journal into version 2.0, so as not to limit the students in terms of their way of writing. This is the digital learning journal process. So the instructor gives the link to students, either via Facebook group, Google, or Messenger. The students fill in the Google form every week. The instructor reads all the reflections for her course, his or her courses. The instructor chooses the best reflection for the week, and then the instructor changes her teaching approach depending on the comments of the students. And the IE department posts the winning reflections on social media. So these are the different categories of reflection. Number one is the academic learning, reflections related to the academic lessons, actual self-development, realizations on self-improvement, Awareness of own mental functions, which is their own way of thinking. Critical review is more on evaluating others compared to self. Decision making is choosing options on uh, their realizations. Empowerment and emancipation, confirmed need to improve areas of oneself. And uh, need, sorry, self encouragement for future endeavors. And for the non-academic learning is the realizations based on feelings and emotion. So these are the different methods of reflection. So we have the tweet express, wherein students express like posting a tweet, less than 150 words, dear future self, a message for their future self five to 10 years from now, quotes and songs wherein they get um, quotes from a song and related to their reflection, Photo voice, captioning, and Instagram-worthy reflection, 
and sketch it wherein they give a sketch and related to their week's learning and mathematics which starts with add, subtract, and multiply. So let's read one quote like from a jewel. This course taught me that one problem can be solved in multiple ways. So the other two were non-winning um, results. Now let's go to the findings. So the findings show that the top three classification or categories are academic learning, non-academic learning, and actual self-development. And we are very happy with this result because students are actually engaging to the non-academic learning. So they are also focused on their process of learning. And in terms of the type of methods used, number one is Tweet Express. And the dear future self and the three to one, which starts with the three things I learned, two questions I can share, and one question. And of course, our response rate is 61.89% per instructor. And I I have the highest response rate, which is 91.56%. So I will share later how did I do it. So another one is I have here a series of reflections from week one to week two so they said each topic should be discussed through a video so students can maintain their good performances discuss more through vids and then for the first week i actually wanted to have the instructor to do a video that is why since i have a youtube channel i created a pre-recorded youtube video for each lesson so the good thing with this is that they were able to recall the video in case they forgot about the lessons so these were their week four, uh, week three to week seven reflections after I posted all the videos. Ma'am, continue making videos every lesson, ma'am. It's so helpful. I'd like to learn more about how to, uh, how to use Excel with the help of the sample videos. The video tutorial is excellent. I think my concern was already heard doing sample videos. Ma'am is so hapnig in her teaching styles. I love the YouTube thing that she's doing. So thank you, ma'am, for teaching us through videos. The effort of making the video is very much appreciated. I love the videos. Videos are super helpful. I love your videos, ma'am, Che. And this, is much, this was my favorite. Video for Simplex Method is super helpful. Subscribe indeed. So I got a new subscriber. <laughs> so another one. I'd like you to journey to a student. This was her reflection from week one to week seven. So this was really the most uh, impact um, uh, reflection that I have read because it was really negative at the first uh, at start so she said I still have much to learn on week one and on week two she said I don't really like working with groups so she said that on week three I really hate group works the efforts given are not equal so the first three weeks were really all negative that's why I messaged them that um, I am hoping for an improvement since you're already uh, for a group in a month now. And of course, uh, in real life, we don't get to choose our workmates. So I said that as a message to their group chat. And she changed, she has already improved her reflection. So as to, uh, she mentioned, um, I need to adapt to my group mates just like in the real world. We need to understand our workmates differences. So her reflections from week five to week seven were already very positive. So she said, uh, she said to her future self about the lessons that she had learned. And then on the week six, she said, I hope uh, this inspired Two me. Two minutes left. Okay, and the like. And she said, thank you for helping me, Mom Chet. So this one is about um, the group mates. So we had a lot of concerns because the internet was low, so I gave them, okay, I will lessen the workload, and then they said the thing for lowering the workload, so on and so forth. And don't have laptops, so I said you can do it manually or spreadsheet, uh, model by pair, with one with laptop and one without. And these were the reflection underserved because we cannot cater the face-to-face -face, uh, discussion. And these were the positive reflections. I like my learning progress from the I department, and so on and so forth. And they said, we really like the IE Weekly Journal because it addresses our concerns from the last week's activities. So what's next? So we want to increase our participation rate at least 90%. So what I did is they have to really post their uh, lessons in, I mean, their screenshot of proof that they have answered the IE Digital Learning Journal. 
And then uh, that is how I got the 90%. And then I, we also want to add more methods of reflection. And of course, we will have a weekly faculty huddle wherein we have to meet as a faculty and discuss common and striking comments so that we can do a collective solution. And lastly, continue to be flexible in changing teaching strategies per week, per class, per semester, because we want to uh, read all their reflect reflections in the Digital Learning Journal. And as I go through all these process, I realize that they actually teach us to teach them better. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mom Cherry D. Um, are we ready for the Q and A, sir? Yeah, congratulations, Che. That's very nice. Thank you, uh, sir. I, I like the one, the ending. No? Teach they teach us to to teach them better, and uh, that's really the the kaizen. And then and then you went to the so what? What's next? So I, it is just something I want. Uh, I'm more of a reactor, not on the Q and A, no, but on. I'm just curious, where did this all come from? I saw the 90%, that's really high. So the engagement mm -hmm. with students is a challenge. Of course, you're a, yeah. millen you're a millennial, so they can relate to you. But uh, <laughs> where did these ideas come from? Um, we actually, sir, in our, we have Facebook groups for all the levels. And usually what Sir Allen do is, he uh, let the students screenshot as a proof or comment down that they have read the, the instruction or comment down as a proof that they have um, answered. So I actually just adopted that one. So I adopted that method wherein, okay, I post this link so that I know that you have answered. Please screenshot a proof that you have answered. So it actually was really helpful. The 10% that we're not able to, to solve or sorry, to answer were actually those without data connectivity or those that were isolated because they were part of the contact tracing for the COVID. So I, but luckily, even I have a large class, I was able to um, to do a 90% participation rate. So I also do follow up, sir, uh, in the messenger. I do follow up now. Okay, please post your week three uh, proof that you have answered, so on and so forth. So my challenge, just my challenge to you is since we are now, we're building a superstar faculty and since we have a YouTube channel and then Sir <laughs> Allen is very elusive, maybe you can take that as one of my e superstar faculty. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Charity. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, Congratulations um, again, no? Um, it's very uh, your 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 sharing um, really is uh, quite quite unique, no? Especially with this uh, reflective type of uh, journal, no? I'm 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 just curious. As you you, you mentioned class size earlier, no? What was the class size for um, particular exercise? Um, all our classes, sir. So uh, most so like. Yeah, all IE courses, sir, they have to do reflective learning so that we will have to let them master the purpose of the reflections, even though when they become professionals, they really have to read or to make reflections as well. Correct. So, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, class size, sir, uh, I have 25 in uh, operations research, 29. So most likely in that area. We also have like around six or, or nine students. So... Uh, it depends on the enrollees, but actually, this can be done for all, despite the class size. So, so you think it's possible? Because how how long are the journals usually? Like, couple. Um, of, um is it just a uh, a paragraph? Two par? Uh, how long are they usually? Um, since we have here, sir, the different methods, so it's really like very quick. It's okay. just a three-page Google form because they have just to choose either of the methods yeah. that they want to use. Yeah. Academic or non-academic. Or... Yeah. And yeah. also, Tweet Express is just 150 words. And then like this one, sir. And then they can do sketch it so, so as not to limit their creativity. Or it can be an Instagram photo. So it's just really quick. 
they can do it in like maybe one minute or two minutes. Ah, okay. So I'm not, I was just asking because I'm thinking of uh, uh, from the side of the teacher, the mm -hmm. amount of, of effort no, to, to actually go through all the, all the tweets and all the, what's this, no? all the submissions of their reflections because that's, yeah. that's weekly. No, that's every week. Yes, yes, there. every week, sir. So it's it's very doable in 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 your in your. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Is, yes, sir. Is this part of their grade? How does no, this... sir. No. No. Uh, okay. But but uh, we've we've really seen the impact of the reflections, sir, because uh, as one of the reflections in the week five, they really appreciated the digital learning journal because the teaching approaches of the teachers really did change in accordance to their comments. So right. they really see progress with regards to the teaching approach. So I can really say that they wanted to do this because they want to, to give us more suggestions to mm -hmm. same teach them better, uh, to teach them better, yeah. Uh, okay, so it, it, mm -hmm. it's good because it doesn't just help them, but yeah. more it, it helps the teacher more. Pa, no, I yes, think. sir. Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, sir. Okay, so do we have uh, questions from the audience? Mom Sai? Um, Mom Jo, so far, no questions yet. <laughs> so probably we encourage uh, the audience to write questions. We still have time for Mom Sharadi to answer. And if there's none, then can we proceed to the next presenter? Okay, so I think we just have to proceed to the next presenter. Oh, wait. Presenter. Wait, Manjo. Uh, we have one question here okay. from Dr. Larmi Pateliskoso. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the question. Can you read all the reflection? Again, can you read all the reflection? Okay, so... So um, actually, since we do it weekly, and of course, uh, we let the students uh, write their reflections, it is also our responsibility to read their reflections. And it's just one of one student per week. And we can really say that we can really see that um, they really want us to improve. And of course, it could be beneficial also to them. And so far, ma'am, as what I did, since we have to post it on social media, we have to claim the winning best reflection. That is why we really have to check all the reflections and see if who really would win this week. And we post it in their Facebook group and then they're really happy that, yay, I won this week and so on and so forth. So it's really actually a millennial type of or the Generation Z type of um, encouraging the students to, to participate. I think it's on the decision of the teacher if he would really uh, read uh, the reflection so as to help her, herself or himself as well for the next coming weeks. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Sheridan. Any more? Um, mm -hmm. Another another question from Miss Jessica Simporius. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, did she make her YouTube video prior to the start of the summer? No. Did all her students followed her YouTube channel? <laughs> Actually, ma'am, I have already a YouTube channel even before uh, the Made for Learners. However, I realized that it was really timely because I was able to maximize my YouTube thing. And um, those videos that I have recorded, those were during the time that I have made the courseware. Because I really did not think to include that in my content. And then I realized, now, oh, this can be a very good content. And I have seen some of my students before. They actually uh, commented in my YouTube channel that, Mom, please do more of these videos. We actually did recall our lessons especially if we forget it and we're in the industry already. So it was really, uh, it was not, it was optional, by the way. We don't require students to, to really watch and subscribe. So it was their own choice if they would subscribe or they would uh, watch. But uh, it really did help them, just like doing the face-to-face -face discussion. But better because you can recall and check the video again. 
Okay, here's another one, Mom She. We have from Chella Maningo. What was your strategy to fully let students write a reflection even if it's not part of your grading system? Ah, okay, ma'am. So, what I did, ma'am, is uh, as, I've see, as I've shown here, I would let them screenshot their proof of answering. So, I would always remind them who did not answer yet. And then they would say, Mom, sorry, I did not have data connection later, Mom. I will, I will have a uh, data connection because we have a class, so I will, uh, I will answer. So it's really more on follow-ups. It's really follow-ups and more on really connecting to students so that they will really have to like, trust you and make sure that you really would, um, what they say, they would really follow you according to your um, instruction to them. So I was really thankful that my students were really, really uh, kind and understanding. And then they even comment that, Mom, we have already posted. They really do a lot of communications in the Messenger. So I'm really thankful that they engage to me even though it's through Messenger. So it's really like your connection to students and making them comfortable that you are approachable and you are available, if not every time, at least most of the time. Okay, here's one another. Another question from Anonymous. Do you Anonymous? See, yes, ma'am. Do you see the possibility of journaling fatigue eventually? Ah, okay. Uh, since I'm not a psychology major, ma'am, although I realized that um, on the seventh week, since I was not able yeah, to do follow-ups on the seventh week, there were no much reflections on the seventh week. However, I realized that it's really uh, because they have already seen the impact of doing the reflection. The one when they said that, I thankfully the videos were, the suggestion to give videos were heard. So they would really do the reflection because they've seen that I did something to change my teaching approach to them. So that's the very good thing with, um, with doing the reflective journal. Although, yeah, it may cause something to the students, but if, it, if they will really see that it will benefit to them, then that's good for me. <laughs> okay, thank so, you very much, Ma'am Shea. I think that would, that would be all. Go back okay, to thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we proceed to our, are we ready for the proclamation of winners? Huh? I think we are ready. So this will be facilitated by Mrs. Cyril Kanimbim, the research assistant for the College of Nursing. Mom Sai. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are now. Okay, we are now to the point, at the point where we are going to award, okay, the exceptionally, no? exceptionally good presentations presented by the respective faculty members. Okay, let's start with the best presenter garnering an average of 87.5%. Okay, um, she will receive a cash... Oh, um, prize worth 1,000 pesos. Okay, so let's give a round of applause to the presenter from the College of Engineering and Architecture, Ms. Sheridy Cabanle. Yay! Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. 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 <laughs> And now, and now for best paper, we have two best papers coming from the College of Computer Studies and the College of Engineering and Architecture. A round of applause. Yay! Hey, congratulations, congratulations mga mams. Hey. That our effort is being rewarded. But remember that we have two kinds of um, reward. We have external and internal. Okay? The external reward is being able to produce something. Okay? That 
um, can be used, okay, to ourselves or to the many, okay, to the society. All presenters have presented their piece very well. So congratulations, everyone. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Mom Sai. And again, congratulations to all the winners and also to all our presenters. Mm -hmm.